What is going on everybody, my name is Robert Watkin and welcome to the first episode of the HTML and CSS tutorial for beginners. In this episode I'm going to go over the choice of IDE, what is an IDE, um, why we use an IDE and how it gets set up so we're ready for the next episode where we'll dive into the actual programming coding side of HTML and CSS. So what is an IDE? I know many of you will be asking if you've never heard this term before. IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. This essentially is your code editor. You can think of it sort of like Word, but for code. So this is the application used to assist in actually creating code, writing code, testing code, etc. And there's loads of different options of IDEs depending what programming language you're using, what technologies you're using, and a lot of it's also preference. So in terms of HTML and CSS, or also web development in general, um, there's two main IDEs I would personally recommend, and these are Visual Studio Code, which you can see the logo for on the left, and Atom, which you can see on the right. I've used both in the past and both are really good, however I do tend to prefer Visual Studio Code on the left, and that's what I'm going to show throughout this series but feel free to explore and try out both try out other IDEs you may find you may find one you prefer and I think for the purposes of this tutorial it shouldn't make a huge difference which one you go with however I would recommend Visual Studio Code there will be a couple of extensions I'm going to show for Visual Studio Code which just make website development a bit easier and um, we'll come to that once we've downloaded the IDE so you'll find the downloads for both of these IDEs following links you see on screen. Um, so if you want to head over to the top link for Visual Studio Code and follow along with the tutorial. But like I've said, feel free to try out Atom or any other IDE you may want to try. But yes, for this tutorial in this mini series, we're going to go through Visual Studio Code. It's important to note that there is a difference between Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. So make sure when you're going to this page, make sure you are downloading Visual Studio Code and not normal Visual Studio. So getting started, I'm going to open up my browser. Now feel free to use Chrome or Firefox or whatever browser you use. I use this browser called Generate. So when you arrive at the download page for Visual Studio Code, it should look similar to this. You're going to want to select the proper software for your system. Um, now I am on Windows, so I'm going to click the big Windows button here, download. You may get a little pop-up here when the download's almost finished saying this type of file can harm your computer. Do you want to keep? Um, we're going to click keep because of course we want to install the software and we're going to click on the exe file here. If you don't see it down at the bottom you can just browse through your downloads folder in your file explorer. So once you've opened up the exe file you'll get the installer window. You want to click I accept the agreement and when you come to this next page you can either select create a desktop icon or you can leave that blank if you don't want a desktop icon and you're going to click next again and you're going to click install after that. Wait a few seconds for this to install. It shouldn't take too long. It's quite lightweight Visual Studio code compared to other IDEs such as uh, actual Visual Studio or NetBeans or more complicated uh, IDEs used for more complicated programming languages such as Java and C Sharp. Um, so yeah, it shouldn't take too long. Once it's done, uh, you can select Launch Visual Studio Code and click Finish and we should have it open up straight away. So this is what you'll see when you first open up Visual Studio Code. What we're going to want to do straight away is actually get an extension added to Visual Studio Code. This extension is essentially going to help us and assist us in our coding, in our programming. So you're going to want to go over to the File tab at the top of the window, head down to Preferences and select Extensions. So I'm just going to drag this a little bit wider so we can see it a bit better. And you will notice I've already got quite a few in extensions installed as I do program myself. I do do other projects and uh, you can see Laravel here. So what we're going to do here is type HTML, oops, sorry, HTML CSS and we'll get HTML CSS support. Click on that. And over here you will have an install button, you want to select that, as you can see mine says uninstall because I've already got it installed. So what this basically does is, as I've already mentioned, assist in writing HTML and CSS code. So if we look at this snippet down here of uh, HTML code, you can see it formats um, certain bits of uh, text, gives it different colours which helps us easily distinguish uh, what 
the bits of text do and it also speeds up development because if we're writing out a tag uh, we'll come to tags in the next episode but this for example is a tag if we start a write out head it will automatically uh, suggest it and it may automatically create the end tag as well so yeah like i said this is just going to help assist us in uh, writing code a little bit faster and uh, pretty much every programming language or IDE has some sort of support system uh, which assists with this. Some IDEs have it built in, for example NetBeans or Visual Studio. Uh, if you're writing in like C Sharp, uh, Java, anything like that, and uh, you're going to use a lot of the same commands over and over. Um, instead of having to write them out fully each time, you can often just write a couple letters and it'll fill in the rest for you. So these tools are really useful for any developer um, wanting to speed up development. If you did see my micro crash course I've done on HTML, which was the last video on the channel, uh, you will have noticed I just edited that in Word, um, and that meant I had to type out everything manually. If there was any mistakes, we wouldn't get told of those mistakes. And uh, indentation, which for those that don't know is essentially the spacing before a tag. Um, we had to also do that manually, but if you've got this extension, it'll automatically do it, which speeds up your coding. It makes it look prettier, um, which is mainly just for you to see as the developer. Um, but oftentimes, if you do work in large teams, you want your code to look pretty in case another software engineer has to work on it, fix it, or whatever later down the line. So now that we've got this HTML CSS support extension enabled, uh, we're ready to essentially get started programming and coding. So just to ensure the extension is actually working correctly, we're going to create a, a HTML file. So go file, new file. We're not going to be saving this, so it doesn't matter too much at the moment about uh, naming it or anything like that or the location we're in. Now, because we haven't actually gave the file an extension such as .html, .css, etc., we do have this little prompt here to select a language. So we can just click on that and just type in HTML. And if we start to write a tag here, now like I said, I'm going to cover this more in depth in the next episode. We just want to check the extension is working. So we're just going to do a less than sign. And if you type that, you'll start to see a bunch of suggestions come up. And we can scroll through these using the arrow keys or the actual scroll wheel. And these are essentially different tags within HTML. So we can see the IntelliSense is working. If we uh, select one, for example, let's do a div. And then we'll close this off with a greater than sign. You can see it automatically puts in the second part of this closing tag. Um, so we do know the extension is working correctly and it's going to help speed up our programming. And one more test, if we hit enter while our cursor is between these two tags, you can see the cursor automatically is indented four spaces when we highlight it we can actually see little dots here representing the spaces and um, so this means the indentation is now being done automatically which means each time we create a new line we don't have to tap space four times or press tab each time um, and we can actually test this one more time by doing another div closing it it automatically inserts the endpoint and then we can hit enter and it inserts another indentation so you can see it is now so you can see it is now automating some of the little tedious steps we'd usually have to do if we were just trying to edit this document in something like Notepad or Notepad++. So this is one of the great advantages of using an IDE specific for your programming language. It makes development time so much faster, especially on large projects. So just to sum this episode up, we have covered what an IDE is, where to get an IDE, the IDE we're going to be using throughout this series, which is Visual Studio Code, you may also hear me refer to this as VS Code or VS. And we've gone through a relevant extension that'll help us develop our websites faster, a bit easier, and it'll also allow us to know what's wrong with our site if we've misspelled something. I would highly recommend if you are just starting to learn these uh, languages and you do want to delve in deeper, practice as much as possible. And um, There may be some stuff you'll look at and you don't quite understand at first, but just repeat it and repeat it and eventually it'll make sense. From experience, the best way to learn how to code is to actually code and practice and make mistakes and don't feel bad if you make mistakes that's part of it i still make mistakes every day in my coding the fun part about coding is you get to solve those problems and try and fix those issues 
that is going to be it for this episode. If you enjoyed the video, then smash the like button. And if you have any questions or suggestions related to this tutorial, then let me know in the comment section below. And lastly, if you want to see more tutorials in the future related to software development, then subscribe to the channel and I'll look forward to seeing you in future videos.